Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good to see you all. Alhamdulillah, good to be back. I've been reciting to an empty mosque for the past one year, so it's good to see some people are, uh, you know, watching and listening in the uh, masjid. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you, bless all of you, all your family members, inshallah. So I'm going to recite from Surah to Shura. Page number is 483, the first 12 verses, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Hameen. Wow. 
والظالمون ما لهم من ولي ولا نصير أم اتخذوا من دوني أولي الله هو الولي وهو يحيي الموتى وهو على كل شيء وما اختلفتم فيه من شيء فحكموه إلى الله ذلكم الله ربي عليه توكلت وإلي أنيب فاطر السماوات والأرض جعل لكم من أنفسكم أزواجكم ومن الأنعام أزواجا يذرأكم فيه ليس كمثل شيء وهو السميع البصير له مقاليد السماوات والأرض يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر إنه بكل شيء صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ الْفَاتِحَةُ الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا محمد 
محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا السلام عليكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله عي على الصلاة عي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي 
على الفلاح الحمد لله الذي قدر كل ما هو آت وكل ما هو فات نسأله عز وجل مجيبات رحمته نسأله الفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار I bear witness there is no deity save Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and his mercy to all mankind we pray to him to shower his mercy and his blessings upon all the prophets and upon Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon all of them First, Assalamu alaikum everyone, and I'm very happy to see all of us here, and alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will yeah. remove this virus away from us so we can come back to a full house like we used to. Brothers and sisters, uh, my khutbah today, inshallah, will be about marriage post-pandemic. It is no secret that what has transpired to the world in the last year and a half had a great impact on this institution we call marriage. Whether it is the economical situation that we all are quite familiar with, losing a loved one, working from home, you are in front of your spouse and your family almost all day. You know, I mean, now slowly things are going back to normal, but still. And I can go on a long list. I'm sure you've heard about it enough. So that definitely, these external realities definitely had an impact on most marriages, not all. I'm sure, alhamdulillah, there are some of us who have immune themselves. But this is a reality. And I decided probably it's always good to remind ourselves what this marriage is all about and possibly little recommendations that through the lenses of Islam, and I want to say up front, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not an expert, I'm not a counselor in any way, but someone who's been married over 30 years, alhamdulillah, I've seen a lot of successful marriages around myself, aware of troubled homes, uh, hearing about divorces lately. So based on that and leaning on the Quran, leaning on Islam, inshallah, we will remind myself and you of what this is all about. Now, always is good, brothers and sisters, to go back to the basics and to the fundamentals. When we are talking about marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about it, mithaqan ghalira. It is a solemn pledge. It is something very serious, this crack al ghalib ghalib means something hard to break. So from the beginning, we find the Quran frames it in a way that it should be an eye-opener to all of us by the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hear a lot that marriage is an institution. What does that mean? When we are embarking or entering the circle or the space of marriage, most of us really don't know too much about it. So we step in into a space that will help us grow. It will train us to be a different people. 
I will step in and I try to tame my ego. We all have ego, so now when you step in into a relationship with your husband or your wife, another individual, you cannot tame your ego. You can't have it. You gotta be able in control of your emotions. You have to learn how to be selfless because until then, it's always about you. Your parents are taking care of you and so on and so forth. Now it's not about you anymore. It's about another human being and the children and so on and her parents and his parents. So as you can tell, you are, have to learn how to love. What does that mean to love and to be loved? What does that mean? I have to, 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 to uh, the shura, you know, I have to uh, uh, console and consult and discuss. All these brothers and sisters, it is in that institution of marriage. So you step in as one individual and as this institution carries you on in this beautiful thing called marriage, you will evolve, you will grow, you will learn so many things. You will make a lot of mistakes and you will learn from them as well. So that is that when we say institution, this is what it means. Now, with that clear, now we look at, I am stepping into a relationship with the opposite sex. So now I am a male and she's a female. And the Quran was very clear. That Male and female are not the same. And all it takes right now, you go on Google and then you type and you will find a plethora, an abundance of information and research and documents and books about how much we are different. There's a lot in common. Allah grew in both of us from His Spirit. We both uh, are, are a human being and both are blessed with dignity nonetheless. The physiology, the emotional, the way they think, we are pretty much different. With that in mind, the Prophet ﷺ summarized the relationship in one hadith. Of course, there are plenty of other hadith, but I picked this hadith. It was narrated in the Tirmidhi, narrated in uh, Dawood, uh, Imam Ahmad, and Nisa'u Shaqa'iku Rijal. That the women and ladies are the shaqa'iq from the shuk when, when you take something and you split it. Shaqa shaykh means split it. So the Prophet is saying is that it is the two splits together. What does that mean? We know now when the Prophet tells me that you are different than her and she's different than you, it means they have trait and characteristics that they have and I don't have and vice versa. So what the Prophet ﷺ, in, and, and, and this cannot come out of a human being, to, to have that depth in summarizing something so, um, so complex in less than one sentence. And Nisabu Shaqa'iq Rijal, in other words, is you are here to complement one another. Not to compete, but to complement. So what she has, you don't have, and what you have, she doesn't have, and together, you are more complete. This is important. Don't expect her and she expects me to be the same. No, we both, Allah created us differently so we can complement one another. So we need to bear that in mind, brother and sister. So with that in mind, now I understand about the institution. I understand about the difference between myself and my wife, between male and female. So now I understand that I have to figure out how together who we are completing one another, how together we're gonna build this institution called marriage. And there is a verse that we hear a lot. You hear it in weddings and you hear it probably, I'm sure, in, in, in khutbas before. I will go into this verse, and there are plenty of material in the Quran and the hadith that we all can benefit from, can enrich this institution, can guide us in this relationship. But I pick one verse, inshallah, and then I hope that I could give it its due 
wait, because in my opinion, this they it present us with the fundamentals of this institution. How do you build this marriage? For those of us who, like myself, after three decades of marriage, there's so much to learn. I was as I was preparing, you will believe how much I have learned just preparing for today. I, how how much I realize that things that I'm not doing it the Islamic way. This prescription, this which I'll go with it today, inshallah. So whether you are embarking upon marriage early on, or you're thinking about marriage, or you are like myself, in it for more than three decades, or you are ahead, there will always be a way to improve and to really take your relationship to the next level. So the verse, we all know it, it is Surah Al-Rum, and it is verse um, 31. And Allah is talking about among his signs, has created from among yourselves your soulmate. And here, brother and sister, it comes the prescription, the fundamentals of marriage, of this extremely important institution. There are three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid them down, sequel, and it's very important that we pay attention to them and to the way they are laid down, the sequel. لِتَسْكُنُوا First, a sakina. And لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So there's a sakina. Sakina means peace, tranquility, ease, since as uh, serenity. That's what sakina means. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّ مَوَدَّ is love. And Rahma came at the end. So Sakina is number one, which is peace and tranquility. Number two is love. Number three is mercy. And, and brothers and sisters, it cannot be this, the way it was laid down, the fundamentals that I'm going to be sharing with you, it cannot be by human being. It is impossible a human being can have that insight except the one who created us. So let us start with the first one, which is a sakina, peace. Now, peace and tranquility, it's very simple. You are going to the house, you want to have as much peace as possible. So if I go into a house and they are fighting and yelling and plates are being broken and things, uh, it's, it's, there's no sakina, there's obviously, it's, 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 it's very clear. It doesn't, doesn't take genius to figure that. So Sakina means there is a relative peace. People are talking, are not shouting, people are not fighting, people are discussing, yes, there are arguments, yes. But it depends how you argue. But before I proceed and elaborate on peace a little bit, the killer of peace in the house is abuse. Whether it is verbal abuse, whether it is emotional abuse, or whether physical abuse. Unfortunately, this is not rampant in our community, but rampant in humanity at large. Just watch the news and you will find so much of it. But this is not the Islamic prescription, and if you are confused, all you have to do is study the seal of the Prophet ﷺ. I wish I had more time to elaborate on this one, but I don't. Never lay the finger on any of his loved wife, wives, or even on his children, Never emotionally or verbally abused. If we love the Prophet and you want to do the Prophet, it's not just about the beard and the dress code, but it's about al-akhlaq, about the way he behaved. And especially, khairukum khairukum ila ahli wa ana khairukum. The best of you is the best to his wife, and I am the best of you. This is how he displayed it. There's no abuse in Islam. Period. Then, I just one peek into this so I can go to the other one is there'll be arguments and with all honesty if you feel he or she feels that they are not in control of their emotion because 70 80 percent of us is emotion we are very emotional human being if we feel we are not in control of our emotion you know I, I, I always take basketball I like basketball take time out she should call for time out or you call for time out and say you know what there's an issue we are discussing here, there's an, there is a disagreement or something, misunderstanding or something, but the emotions are too high right now, let us cool it off. 
let us do something else and re reconvene. Don't, don't, I mean, push it under the rug. No, come back to it. But if you're not in control of your emotion, do not get into the discussion. You gotta have peace, brother and sister. And the peace is so important because it is the soil upon which you're gonna put the seed of love, which is the second one, mawadda. So the first one comes the sakina. Now you have the fertile soil, which is a, a, a fertile for the seed of love to grow and to become a tree and can produce fruits. But if you don't have a fertile, a fertile soil and there's always bickering and fighting and there is a harsh reality at home, the seed of love will crack and die. There will be no love. And nothing beats love. We all know. I don't need to remind us the verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and the Prophet how much love is important. We all know that. And life without love will be empty, devout. Our relationship with Allah is based on love. Our, with, with the Prophet based on love. We are people of love, brothers and sisters. And the best thing is to, to, to let that love that it is entrenched in our faith to touch the first person who is your partner, who you're building this important institution, which is your wife. Now, I don't need to give us, it's not seasonal. I don't just, only when there is a season and I rush and I buy flour and, and, and balloon and, 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 and chocolate only, no, no. Love is a daily thing. And love, as I said, it is, you have the seed of love that comes with marriage, but you have to, you know, water it. You have to take care of it. And I'll, 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 I'll go over one or two things. Brothers and sisters, when the Prophet was sitting down and someone told him, oh, Prophet Allah, I love this man. He told him, did you tell him? He said, no. He said, go tell him. We men have the tendency don't express with, with, with words. But she, she, she knows I love her. No, she wants, the Prophet told her, no, go tell him. He should know. She, she or he, we both, husband and wife, we should hear that from one another. Don't take each other for granted. She done something good for you. He's done something good for you. Thank them. Be grateful. Man lam uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, man lam yashkur al nas lam yashkur al those who are not grateful appreciate the things that's coming to you from that individual that you're not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in other words, is in you know invest into love. I wanna spend a little bit more time on the last one because it is only a divine wisdom can put a rahmah at the end. And we all know a rahmah. We I don't need to go through it by now compassion and mercy and tenderness and gentleness. I'm just gonna show you how a rahma, why it came at the end, and how rahma should manifest itself into our institution of marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful verse that after the battle of Uhud, when the Muslims, the army of Muslims were devastated, more than 70 of the Sahabis were killed, it was a really bad day. And those who were supposed to be defending the Muslims, the archers on the hill, they left their post and the enemy came from behind and crushed the army of the Muslims. So the first thing comes to your mind in this really bad thing that the Quran comes and be swift in justice, right? What the Quran does, what the Quran tells the Prophet. It is by the grace of God you were lintalam, you were tender and gentle. With who? With those who defied, did something big wrong that led to the devastation of the army of the Muslims. More than 70 people were killed. If you were harsh and rude and mean, they would disperse from you. Disperse from the messenger and the prophet of Allah who is receiving Jibreel? Yes. Human nature, nobody likes harshness and rudeness and meanness. So when we as husband, we're harsh and rude and mean when we're angry and frustrated or whatever, doesn't matter. Allah is telling you that that doesn't work. People will leave, you're gonna, you're gonna break this institution. Now comes the, the divine wisdom. How do, you de how do you manifest mercy in this 
institution of marriage, when there is something really bad to happen between husband and wife. Before you, we rush to divorce and before we call it it's over, Allah is saying is that the, the prescription of the third fundamental, the first one we said, Sakina, peace at home. The second is love, which we talked about this. The third is mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is when one of you has done something bad, how the other person should treat. <clears throat> this is what the Quran is telling the Prophet and he's telling all of us here today and to those one who are not here today, who in their relationship there is a great challenge before them. What Allah says, forgive them, I will elaborate. These are three things. How do you manifest mercy in the institution of marriage when there's a great challenge before you? These are the three things that Allah is saying is you want to subscribe to Islam and you want to be belong to Islam and you want to be inspired by the Quran and for the of the Prophet, this is what we have to do. First, erase. You know, erase means you have, have an eraser. A father walked in to his son who just got married. He told him, bring a piece of paper, bring me a pencil, and bring me an eraser. So the man didn't know what he's talking about. He said, write on that paper. He said, he said, erase it. For almost an hour, write and erase, write and erase, write and erase. And then told him, look at the paper. Is it clean? He said, yeah, it's clean. He said, because of the eraser. You got to erase. When he or she does something, you cannot keep it in, bottled in. You have to erase it. Fa'fu anhum means erase it. Wastaghfir lahum. Allah always is present in the relationship between the two. Don't go alone. Pray for them. Make sure that they are in your prayers. Who do you pray for? For those one who you care for. I'm not going to pray for my enemy. I'm going to pray for those who I love, who I care for. Pray for my friends, pray for my family, pray for my wife, my kids, my friends, my community. Right? I mean, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is, bring Allah to that relationship. Go to him. Have him be the third. Don't go alone. And last but not least, don't cut the communication. Keep the communication going on, especially us men. And I, I'm the first one to, 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 to admit when I'm hurt or when I'm upset, I withdraw. Communication cuts. And the wife asks, what's wrong? Nothing. And more I did the research, more I started learning. It seems like we men have a tendency that it might serve us in other places, but not in the relationship. Allah said in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, you do not cut communication with those who led to the Muslim army to be defeated and to be really badly hurt. So this is how great the challenge might be before us. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is saying is, Sakina, soil has to be fertile for the love to grow. And you have to nurture that love, nurture that, 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 I mean, that, that, that seed until it becomes a tree, it can enjoy the fruit of love. And last but not least, when there is a great challenge, remember, a race, do not hold back. Do not let the heart fill of anger and hate and never forget what she's done or what he's done. We have the tendency to do that. A race, keep on erasing. Bring Allah to that relationship. And last but not least, brothers and sisters, do not cut the communication, always keep on talking. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله. الحمد لله الذي كتب على نفسه الرحمة وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope today we scratch the surface of how do we care for this institution called marriage. How do we strengthen that relationship? How do we fix it? 
how do we make sure that it is a healthy institution? And let me, let me share with you something that after 30 some years of marriage, and alhamdulillah, I have, been, I have been, I hope so many of us, I hope we are all blessed with a good <coughs> spouse, he or she. One thing I can tell you from looking around, if you study the life of the Prophet Sallallahu from the time of Khadija all the way until he departed this world, the, the, the part of life, you look around and you will see a giant figures who we, you know, they were leaders of our institution. You will look closely into their marriages, all their successful marriages. Because you cannot grow intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, and even you can go as far as financially if your house is shaken and is weak. You cannot. So that's why Islam has <coughs> invested and the Prophet ﷺ has put so much effort into making sure that we understand how important this institution is because yes, it is producing the leaders of tomorrow. The children who comes from a troubled home, they're going to have a lot of issues to deal with in life. So you want to have a st stable, healthy, as the Quran is talking about, but in addition to that, you and I and each and every one and my wife and your wife and my sister and everyone who is married, he or she cannot grow in these aspects of growth, whether it's, as I said, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually, unless there is peace at home, unless it is a healthy the marriage, this institution is pretty healthy and pretty positive. So I hope, inshallah, this is a reminder to all of us how <coughs> important it is, and we should all retrieve and evaluate our relationship or those who are around us and, and do our best to use the Quranic prescription to fix things and, to, and for remedy and to improve. Alhamdulillah, if you have healthy marriage, great, but to improve so you can really enjoy this beautiful institution and help you grow to the next level of your growth and your development. Let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our faith, to purify our hearts, <coughs> to make us among those who really understand the essence and the true message of Islam, and to understand and to embrace the true message of the Quran and of the teaching of the Prophet in our institution and in our marriage. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us on the footsteps of his Prophet sallallahu so we will be the best spouses there is to be, so we become the shining stars for the rest of the community and the rest of the society, inshallah. Wa akhidu alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, aqim as Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Shadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Shadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Hayya ala al-Salati, Hayya ala al-Falah, قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا فسبحان الله حين تسبحون فسبحان الله حين تمسون وحين تصبحون وله الحمد في السماوات والأرض وعشيا وحين تظهرون 
يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ويحيي الأرض بعد موتها وكذلك تخرجون ومن آياته أن خلقكم من تراب ثم إذا أنتم بشر ثم إذا أنتم بشر تنتشرون ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم موت ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم الله أكبر حضر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر تحيات الله والصلاه والطيبات سلام الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all prayers, our du'as, dear brothers and sisters. It's good to see you all. Alhamdulillah. Welcome back to your center, Islamic Center of Southern California. First, I would like to thank our khatib, Brother Hassan Zini, for this beautiful and meaningful khutbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless his family members. And bless you and bless your family members as well, inshallah. I would like to remind you that tomorrow at 9.30, we will have our food pantry. And then also we have virtual programs in the weeknights and the weekends. Please check our website, stemcenter.com. And then also it's on the Facebook. You can attend and join our programs uh, via Zoom and Facebook, inshallah. Let us pray for those who are sick and passed away. And one of our sisters, her name is Jamila, just had surgery. And uh, please keep her in your prayers as well, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma shfi mardana wa arham mawtana. Allahumma fi al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat. Wa al-muslimina wa al-muslimat. Al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat. Inna ka sami'ahum qaribu mujibu da'awat. Oh Allah, the Lord of the whole universe, the most merciful, the most compassionate, please bless the souls of those who passed away before us. Please give quick healings for those who are sick. Ameen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al-Fatiha. Bismillah.